Hello, today is April 15, 2022. My name is Kevin Garcia. I'm interviewing Azul Alejos for the University Library Special Collections and Archives at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, hereafter abbreviated as UTRGV. This project is in partnership with the Bosses Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Please know, Ms. Alejos, that this interview will be placed in the University Library Special Collections and Archives at UTRGV and shared with the Bosses Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. If there's anything you do not wish to answer or talk about, I will honor your wishes. Also, if there's something you want to talk about, please bring it up and we'll talk about it. The University Library Special Collections and Archives will archive your interview along with any other photographs and other documentation you're willing to share. UTOGV University Library will retain copyright or non-exclusive right to the interview and any other materials you donate to the special collections and archives at UTRGV. Because we are not conducting this interview in person, I need to record you consenting to make sure you agree with, with our interview procedures before we continue. So I'll ask you a series of six questions. Please say, yes, I agree, or no, I do not agree after each question. Number one, do you give the University Library Special Collections and Archives at UT or UV consent to archive your interview and your materials at the University Library? Yes, I agree. Okay, number two, do you grant UT or UV University Library Special Collections and Archives right, title, and interest in copyright over the interview and any materials you provide? Yes, I agree. Do you agree to allow UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives to post this interview on the internet where it may be viewed by people around the world? Yes, I agree. Number four, do you grant the University Library Special Collections and Archives consent to share your Zoom interview with the Bosses Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin for inclusion of the Bosses of Pandemic Oral History mini project, which will include posting the interview on the internet? Yes, I agree. Okay, as you recall, we previously filled out a pre-interview form. We use information from the pre-interview form to help you in research. The entire form is kept in a secure Bosses server at the University of Texas at Austin. Before Bosses sends it to the UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives, we will have stripped out any contact information for yourself or family members. So that will not be part of your public file. Your public file will only be accessible at UTRGV University Library. The final two questions uh, ask for consent on what I just described. Number one, do you wish for us to share the rest of your interview in your public file available to researchers at UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives? Yes, I agree. On occasion, UTRGV Special Collections and Archives and voice bosses receive requests from journalists who wish to contact or interview subjects. We only deal with legitimate news outlets. Do you give consent for us to share your phone number or your email with journalists? Yes, I agree. Thank you for your consent. Your experiences and stories mean a lot to us here at UTRGV. I look forward to what you have to say in the interview. I'm gonna ask you right now. Ms. Alejos, thank you for your time. Like I said earlier, your stories and experiences are valuable to us at UTRGV Special Collections and Archives and to our partners at the Bosses Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. So before we talk about COVID-19 stories, can you please share with us a bit about yourself? Who are you and how you wish to be known? Who is Azul Alejos? Of course. So I would like to start off by saying um 
My name is Azula Lejos. I am 22 years old. I currently live with my sister and my cousin. Uh, I work as a server server at Olive Garden. Okay, this first section of questions asks you to please share your stories and memories from when the COVID-19 pandemic first made its impact back in December 2019 to about the summer of 2020. So the first question I want to ask you is, can you share some memorable stories about how you first heard or learned about COVID-19? Of course. So, um, so how I really originally had heard about COVID-19 was uh, through social media. Uh, a lot of people started to panic and started to post about it on Twitter and on Facebook. And uh, it, origin it uh, eventually got to me where I found out that uh, everything was going on about COVID. Okay. What were some earlier reports or rumors about COVID-19 that you remember back in 2020? Uh, so back in 2020, there were a lot of rumors about COVID-19, but one of the ones that stuck the most to me because I thought it was kind of ridiculous or a ridiculous rumor was um, supposedly that uh, COVID-19 had originally had originated from a bat, that someone had consumed a bat and that is how it started to to spread, that's how people got infected with the virus. Okay. At what point do you realize this pandemic was serious life altering event? Or do you not think it's serious? Uh, yes, uh, I definitely do think that COVID uh, is very serious and it was a, a life threatening event. I guess uh, for me, when I when I first realized that uh, it was a serious, serious virus it was uh, when everyone started getting sick and people actually started going to the hospital because they were having trouble breathing. And uh, a lot of people that I knew uh, lost their sense of smell and taste. That's when I started to uh, realize that this might be a little bit serious, a little bit more serious than I thought. Okay. Do you remember what it was like for you during the stay at home orders in 2020? Yes, of course I do remember. Um, so during those times, for me, um, personally, it was really hard because at the time I was living with my mom and all my siblings, where me and my mom were the ones that had to work to pay rent and bills. So I remember that at the time, it was very hard because uh, we had to stay at home and we couldn't really work. So there wasn't really any money coming into the house uh, to pay all those bills that were that were happening. Okay. Over the last couple of years, what news media, social media, or other resources do you rely on to keep you informed about COVID-19? So uh, I guess over the last couple of years, I've uh, I have been relying on social media platforms to inform me about COVID. But as time went by, I realized that um, social media might not be a very good uh, news source. So I started to watch uh, more of the news um, so that I could rely on that and keep for it to keep me informed about um, everything that was going on with COVID. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you share with me what you understand about COVID-19 as an infectious disease and how you feel it's impacted society? Likewise, can you share with me what you don't understand about COVID and what you wish you could know more about? Of course. Uh, so I guess I should start by saying what I do understand about it. For me, COVID has always been uh, very serious and uh, I understand that this is a highly contagious disease that can be life-threatening uh, on the other hand, I guess what I don't understand would have to be how this really originated. I would love to know more about how this infectious disease came to be.
Okay. Do you fear your family has the same beliefs as you about COVID-19? Or are there some members who take it more seriously or lightly? Uh, yes, yeah, so personally in my family, we all might have uh, our different beliefs. Uh, for example, uh, most of my family has the same beliefs as me, which is I believe in uh, the vaccine. I believe in the virus. Uh, I believe that it's a life draining disease. But on the other hand, uh, my my sister and my cousin might have a different opinion about it. Well, they have a different opinion about the vaccine and uh, they just don't really believe in all of that. Okay. This next part asks you to share any stories about COVID-19 vaccines and any vaccination related stories you may wish to tell. Number one, do you get the vaccine and any follow up booster shots? Yes, I did. I got both the vaccine and the booster shot. Okay. What was it like? Was it easy or difficult for you to, in terms of scheduling, wait time? Uh, I guess I would have to say it was pretty easy. Uh, I had no trouble scheduling an appointment. I think it was, uh, I think the harder, hardest part was getting a COVID test more than anything. I guess the vaccine was super easy. They, you would schedule the appointment. You would, uh, they would give you a date. You would walk in and walk out within 10 minutes of, uh, of being there. Okay. Uh, can you share a memory from the place where you were vaccinated or boosted? Yes. So uh, I got vaccinated at a CVS. I remember I had uh, scheduled an appointment with uh, some of my friends and uh, my boyfriend. Um, we all scheduled the appointment the same day. We made it a little road trip to Harlingen where it was where we were getting the vaccine. Got some snacks for the way and uh, got there, got the vaccine, got out. And we all felt, I guess we felt a little bit more protected with the vaccine in our system. Okay, perfect. Okay, this next set of questions, Azul, are going to ask you about how COVID-19 has impacted your life and your family's life. Okay, Azul, you shared with us in the pre-interview that you hope your family pay for bills around the house. How, how big was the family in your household when this pandemic started? Yes, so uh, my household uh, consisted at the time of five people. It was my mom, my stepdad, my sister, my little brother, and I. Uh, so yes, I guess, uh, like I said in the previous interview, it did all, it did affect the way that we pay bills around the house because of how when COVID was going on, there wasn't as many people going out to restaurants as much. The business was slow, so there wasn't enough, uh, there wasn't like a lot of uh, tables, a lot of uh, tips. So unfortunately, yes, it did uh, affect me in a negative way uh, with that. Okay. Have you or any of your family members been infected with COVID-19 virus? Yes. So unfortunately, my mom was in the hospital not too long ago. Uh, because she had been infected with the virus and uh, had a very difficult time breathing. Um, so, yes. Okay. How do you and your family get past this? Do you or a person infected have to quarantine in a room or you have to go to another house? What was it like? Yes, so um, at the time it was super difficult. It was uh, very hard because at the beginning, of course, my siblings and I were worried about my mom's health. So it was hard because she had to be hospitalized and isolated for about two weeks at the hospital. And uh, I guess the hardest part was that we weren't able to go in and see her. We weren't able to like be in contact with her or anything like that. So I guess... Uh, we were all just worried about her and just wanted her to recover for her to come back with us uh, at the house. Okay. 
um, has your family been affected in a negative way, for example, financially because of COVID-19? Sadly, yes. Uh, as I said it in one of the past questions, it was extremely difficult for us to come up with the money for the rent because of how there really wasn't that many people going out and eating at restaurants. The business wasn't as good as um, before, of course, before COVID started. So yes, it was a very difficult time um, and extremely hard to come up with the money for, for the rent and for bills that we had to pay. Okay. Uh, you mentioned in the pre-interview form and in the past question that your mom was hospitalized because she was sick with the virus. Uh, for how long was your mom sick and unable to work? So yes, I uh, I studied on the in a few a few questions before this. Uh, my mom had been hospitalized for two weeks. Uh, she wasn't able to come home until two weeks after uh, she had uh, been isolated. Um, but yes. Okay. Uh, you shared with me that your sister did not want to get the COVID nineteen shot or the booster shot because she did not believe in it. Uh, did your sister still take precautions to prevent getting sick? Uh, yes, she, uh, so although my sister has never gotten the vaccine or the booster shot, she was still very, very cautious and uh, respectful about the virus. She would still wear her mask and wash her hands regularly, wear gloves sometimes, you know, she would still, um, she didn't really want to get infected either, you know, although she didn't believe in the vaccine, she still took precautions and of course, uh, kept everything as it was. Okay. Uh, do you think that uh, could have imp impacted that your mom got sick? Um, personally, no, I do not blame my sister for getting my mom sick or uh, anything like that. I know my sister, like I said, uh, would take care of herself. Um, although she didn't get the vaccine, like I said, she would uh, really wear her mask everywhere she went. And she really was uh, very careful about that because, of course, she didn't want to get anyone sick or spread the disease even more. So, yeah, I don't I don't I don't blame her or or don't think that it's because of that, that she got sick. Okay. Okay, so let's now talk about how this pandemic has affected your work as an Olive Garden employee. Azul, you mentioned to me that you have been employed at the Olive Garden located in Brownsville, Texas, since it opened back in 2017, and that you first started as a host, then moved to a server. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Can you share some stories on how working as a server at Olive Garden was before the pandemic? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, before the pandemic, uh, well, Olive Garden was way different. Uh, I guess uh, starting off by just being busy and uh, and uh, having a lot of uh, variety, I guess, and just always busy and um, constant tables, you know, um, as, uh, as per different to when it was after the pandemic, uh, there wasn't a lot of tables. It was uh, not a lot of people going out and stuff. So yes, it was very different. Okay. Can you recall March, 2020, when COVID started impacting the US? How did your work change at the start of the pandemic through the present? So, like I said, at the start of the pandemic, I guess uh, when everything, everything originally started, I remember everything, everyone was panicking because of um, because of the virus, you know, no one wanted to get infected, no one wanted to, to get sick, to get their parents sick, to get their uh, grandparents sick, you know, uh, so it was very uh, different, I guess. Uh, they started shutting down all the restaurants, they started... Um, shutting down everything. No one could go out. Everyone had to stay home. If you went out, it would have to be like only because you had to like necessities, you know, like toilet paper or food or things like that. So it was very, very weird, very different. Something that uh, 
that very that impacted me a lot you know being at home and just uh not being able to go out okay when did you first see covid impacting your work for example when did you first notice that things were going to change at work because of covid-19 and the pandemic I guess when everything started shutting down, that's when I was like, whoa, you know, because like I wasn't going to have any money. Uh, we were closing down where I work. Like I felt like it was going to definitely be different. And uh, like it, it definitely did impact me that everything closed and uh, that we weren't able to get money from our jobs as we used to. Okay. Uh, did your menu item, items change at all because of food shortages during the pandemic? If yes, how so? Yes, definitely. Um, it's so weird because I never would have thought that the menu items would be less or anything like that. I thought everything was going to be the same with the menu, you know? But yes, there was a lot of change. Uh, I remember before the pandemic, we used to have over 30 items on the menu and uh, when the pandemic started we had like 10 at most you know we didn't have that many that many things uh, which was very weird you know I don't know I don't know what was the reason behind that but uh, yeah it definitely did change on the menu okay what types of social distancing was or is still practiced in the restaurant? So back then, uh, they would sit tables around six feet apart from each other. And the limit of the restaurant was about 25% capacity. Uh, not a lot of people were allowed to come in. I mean, not a lot of people were going anyways. But um, if anyone did come in, they would have to sit six feet apart. And um, everyone was like, there was like glass things separating all the tables and uh, just a lot of precautions, you know. Uh, then uh, a few months a few months in the pandemic, they changed it to 50% and it just started increasing the percentage of capacity as time went on. And I guess right now we're already at 100% capacity. Okay. Do you notice any customers not wanting to follow up any pandemic precautions, like suggested wearing masks or otherwise? Yes, definitely. Um, there was a lot of people that vice versa, you know, like there was people that were would come in without a mask and uh, we would uh, we would tell them to please put on their mask for the safety of others and themselves. And they wouldn't want to because of how of their beliefs or because they just simply did not want to. And uh, but then there was the other people that would come in with their masks and see other people that weren't wearing their masks and, you know, like get mad because of that. So it was very it was very difficult. And. Um, and so, yeah, it, it was very different. OK. Uh, did anyone in your job get sick of COVID or suffered hospital hospitalization because of it? Yes. So uh, as a matter of fact, uh, most of the employees from the restaurant got sick from COVID and they weren't allowed to work until they felt better, you know, until um, they got tested again and uh, until they came out negative. So, but yeah, there was a time when... Uh, when a lot of people from my job got sick and we we were thinking maybe we were gonna shut down because a lot of people were getting sick. So, but yes, I remember even uh, I had this coworker that uh, unfortunately passed away because of COVID. And uh, so, yes, it was very difficult. Okay. Um, how did the, how did all these problems go, going on in your work affect you and your family at home? So uh, I guess it affected me and my family because we as servers, we're not making enough money to provide for a family, you know, like there's not a lot of people going in, there's not uh, much business. Um, my restaurant, I, uh, like I said before, it was only taking 25% capacity. We weren't making enough money, you know, 
um there wasn't uh many tables to take or you know so it was it was very hard uh paying for bills or buying food sometimes you know okay if a more problematic variant of COVID-19 emerges in the summer or winter months can you tell me what workplace precautions you hope to see Yes, of course. So um, I guess I would hope to see the same precautions. I think that it worked out perfectly. The six feet apart rule, the wearing your mask, washing your hands constantly, uh, the social distancing, um, sanitizing the tables and chairs and everything. Uh, I think that, that we handled it pretty good. Um, I think it was, uh, I, I think we did handle it pretty good. So yes, I, I hope to see the same even maybe even uh, better precautions if it's a, a worse virus, you know, but uh, I think that that was uh, pretty good for us. Okay. Uh, you told me in the pre-interview that when your mother got sick, you had to single-handedly put the weight of your whole family on your shoulders when paying for bills. Tell me how hard was it to make this happen or how did you make it happen? So yes, uh, as I said before, it was very difficult. And um, even though uh, it's not as e it's not easy to wake up every day and go to work just to help my family out, uh, I felt that I had to do whatever it takes and whatever was necessary to help my family, of course, uh, to work more hours as before the pandemic and uh, just to make the same amount of money as before, you know, like um, there wasn't enough money in my, like there wasn't, money coming from my job I had to work more hours and uh, the tips weren't good um, people didn't really have that much money either you know they weren't going out as much so yes um, yeah it was pretty hard okay um, when they decided to close your workplace for a few months how did you and your family manage to make it happen or how did you contribute to your family when you didn't have any job So um, when, I guess for me, when, uh, when Olive Garden closed uh, for, me, for a few months, uh, I had to stay at home and help my mom with my, with my brothers and, uh, and help clean the house, help feed my, my siblings um, so that my mom could work and, uh, and pay for the bills for us, you know. Um, fortunately, my mom's job was uh, open and she could work for us, but... Um, So yeah, I, I had to stay at home and and clean the house and, and feed my, my, my siblings. Okay. Uh, what kept you motivated while you were going through all these hard times? Um, there's a lot of things that kept me motivated, uh, but one of the one of the most important ones was, I guess, just spending time with my family. I I felt that um, we needed more more family time you know uh, I felt that it kind of brought us together spending more time we got to know each other more even though we we live with each other we don't really get to talk to each other as much I guess there was a lot of free time you know uh, we had days where there was nothing to do you would just be playing video games or playing board games with your family or sitting around and watching a movie you know so it was very it was very beautiful to be able to be motivated by that, by, by your family, by the happiness that came from being in your household, you know? So yes, I guess that's what kept me going every day, just being with my family and, and seeing them be healthy, you know? Okay. Uh, is there anything you wish you had done different? Yes, I guess I wish I had used the time of the pandemic uh, when we were in quarantine to figure out a good hobby for me instead of just wasting my time doing nothing because really I really wouldn't do anything well uh, other than clean and, and help with my siblings. I really wasn't doing anything uh, as a hobby. You know, I wish I would have uh, definitely found a hobby, something that I liked. Okay. Do you think anything possible, uh, sorry, do you think anything positive came out of the whole pandemic for you or your family? 
I think um, the only positive thing that came out of this pandemic was that me and my family got more united. I guess more than uh, more than ever, and um, we were having a good time as a whole group, you know, uh, as a family. I felt that we needed that before the pandemic started, and uh, that just helped us become more united, become more. Uh, I guess we became closer in a way because we got to know each other more and we got to spend time with each other and love each other for who we are, you know. So I guess yeah, that's the that's one of the positive things that. Uh, that came out of this pandemic was spending time with my family and getting to know them truly. Okay. Uh, this last section asks you to share any stories you have about the pandemic and the response by local, state, and national elected officials. Feel free to respond or pass on any of these questions. So the first one, is do you feel satisfied with the local response to COVID-19 in the Bronzeville, Rancho Viejo, and Cameron County over the last two years? Uh, so, yes, uh, I feel like my county has made a good job in making sure everyone has to save. Everyone was safe and following all the procedures to uh, all the procedures needed to avoid getting sick. You know, uh, I feel like, yeah, my, my county did make a, did a, keep me or made me feel satisfied. OK. Are you satisfied with the state response to COVID-19 led by Governor Avar over the last couple of years? Uh, in a way, I, I feel like he might have opened Texas back up way too fast, you know? Uh, we were in the middle of everything when he decided to, to open back up for business, you know? And... Uh, I guess that is kind of like what caused the virus to spread to spread like rapidly. Um, I feel like if he would have waited a few more weeks or maybe a few more months, uh, it would have been perfect because the virus looked like it was being controlled effectively. But the fact that he opened the state back up and started uh, opening all the restaurants back up, I feel made it a little bit more difficult for the virus to be controlled. So yes, um, I guess that's that's my answer. Okay, uh, how do you feel about the national response to COVID-19 led by President Trump in the year of 2020 and then President Biden from 2021 to present? Um, so I feel like, I feel like COVID really affected us and um, it could have been taken more seriously in a way, you know. However, I also feel like they they did do everything for a reason, you know. And if that was the best decision to be made, and uh, then it's okay, you know. Um, they are overall the, the president of the United States, you know. Okay. If you had the power of a political office to respond to COVID-19, what will you do differently? So um, if I had the power to respond to COVID-19, I would have given all college students uh, financial assistance uh, only because they were affected badly and they are the future of our nation, you know? I feel like we gotta look out for them. We gotta look out for, for, for our students, uh, our college students. I would also help out low-income families with more money and would not have opened the nation back up until everything was completely safe and uh, for everyone, you know. Okay. Uh, this is a special year in our nation, national democracy, because it's a midterm election voting year. Do you plan to vote? If so, is the issue of COVID-19 going to factor into your votes? 
No, I personally do not plan on voting this year only because I feel like there are no good candidates to vote for, in my opinion. So, yeah, I, I will not be voting this year. Okay. Uh, will you consider the national response to COVID-19 pandemic in your vote for a presidential candidate? So I feel like if, if I were to vote, I would, but since I'm not, I'm, uh, no. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you would like to share with me about your experiences with COVID-19 that I have not asked about? Uh, I think I, I think I pretty much said everything I had to say. I think we covered everything, uh, everything that I had to say. So. Okay. Uh, what impact or purpose do you hope your story may have? Okay, sorry. Let me rephrase that. What impact or purpose do you hope your story may have on listeners of the Bosses of a Pandemic Digital Archives? I, I would hope that they understand the struggle that we went through as a community and as a person, you know, um, and that no matter what happens, you can always come back together stronger as a nation, as a group of uh, people, society, you know. Okay, thank you as well for sharing your stories with me and the voices of a pandemic oral history project. I hope you have a good day. Thank you, sir.